When the World Cup kicks off in Korea in June, visitors from around the world may be surprised to see dog meat on the menu at local restaurants. In many Asian countries, eating dog is a tradition and is commonly served up in stews, soups, and sauces. But the practice has outraged many animal rights groups who argue that dogs are domesticated animals and should not be sold for their meat. Now there's a movement afoot to change people's attitudes toward dogs by providing them a good dose of animal therapy. Susan Yu has the story. It just broke our hearts because every time you put your hand into the cage, they would lick your hands and they would be crying to get out. In Asia community, years ago, the people would use dogs as food, just like in China or Vietnam. Markets like these in China are commonplace throughout the region. And so too is the consumption of wild and domesticated animals, such as cats and dogs. But one group is trying to reverse the tradition using an unconventional method. This army of dogs is ready for work. That's to provide an education and comfort to the young, sick and needy. <laughs> They're all part of a program called Dr. Dog, made up of canines who've been abused. Fafa was a, a, a really a sad story, and he, she was a stray dog before in Yunnan, and he was tortured by the people. The people shoot him, and also um, with some scar in the nose. So the owners were very kind and adopt her, and now she becomes um, our doctor dog, and we will tell the story when, whatever, uh, whenever we go to the visit, especially for the children, so that the people and uh, the children can learn how to respect animal lives. On this day, it's the elderly who are learning how to respect and appreciate these animals. There are some who really are home alone and don't have relatives. When the doctor dogs visit them, their spirits are a lot better. Ho Wing Lao can vouch for that. The 72-year-old says the canine doctors provide hope and inspiration for him and his fellow patients. People are happier with them. You see all the patients, they think they are so cute. This program gives us support, especially for the sick. Patients get lonely, so it's a good thing for them most of the time. You could say Ho, like many others, has come full circle regarding his relationship with dogs. I tried dog meat a long time ago. After having a little bit, I just couldn't eat dog meat anymore. It's something organizers are happy to hear. Jill Robinson started the canine program in 1991. Since then, the Dr. Dog program has left its footprint all across Asia. And the program has now started in Japan, in China, in Taiwan, the Philippines, and we're launching it very soon into India as well. So it, it's just taken off. And Robinson says the program has even won the support of the biggest skeptics. Seriously, I was met almost by disbelief by hospital staff and uh, doctors that couldn't believe I was seriously suggesting bringing dirty, smelly, unhygienic dogs into a sterile hospital env environment. And what's just as unbelievable are the stories behind these animals. This is Eddie, and um, we found him about 18 months ago in a market in China, in, in southern China, in Guangdong. And Eddie was lying in a cage in a huge, great animal market. He was lying there with uh, other dogs waiting to be slaughtered for food. We couldn't let him go. We just couldn't. We realized that this was perhaps one dog that we could bring back to Hong Kong and show a unique role as an animal therapist. And he's never proved us wrong. Eddie has plenty of company these days. In Hong Kong, the Dr. Dog program is running in more than 70 hospitals, orphanages and elderly homes like this one. It may be hard to imagine, but a bow here is one of 300 canines that make up part of the Dr. Dog program. Getting into the special canine club is no easy task. There are examinations to pass, along with an extensive probation period. 
Dow Dow is one of about 30 canines going through the mandatory six-month probation period. It's during this time the contenders are tested for their temperament with humans and other dogs. And then there's the health check before being certified. Bring the dogs to different centers and uh, or and hospital so that they are uh, they are familiar with different environments. So after half a year, they will be qualified to a uh, doctor dog and got the ID like this one. Mm -hmm. Animal rights activists know that man's treatment of these four-legged creatures can be cruel. But at least there is hope. The success of the program is proving that dogs can be man's best friend, if they're given the chance.